Hey everybody, this is Jordan again with PictureMonk.com and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, this one is going to be sort of a basic one, um, but basically I'm going to show you how to take the files that you shot as a panorama and combine them in Photoshop to make one large image. Um, I, I assume by watching this tutorial you know actually how to take the photos for the panorama. Uh, I'll go over that briefly just to give you an idea, but um, this is mainly for the software portion of it. So uh, basically what I have is these seven files right here. These were shot in a, in a parking garage uh, just overlooking a part of the city. Um, it's not going to be the greatest photo in the world. I was basically just doing this for a tutorial purpose. Um, so what I'm basically going to do is just make sure you have all your files over here where you can grab them easily. Uh, select them all and drag them into Photoshop and that will open them in camera raw if you shot them in raw which you probably should be for this kind of purpose because you can do a lot more editing to them um, and I'm just gonna make some basic edits nothing really uh, nothing really crazy so just bring down my highlights to bring some sky up the shadows a little bit I'm a big fan of the shadow slider uh, take the contrast up maybe warm it up just a little bit maybe uh, and one thing that a lot of photographers don't do, which I've had really good success with, is the lens correction. They'll, I'm going to go ahead and enable the lens correction. You can see how it corrected the, some of the distortion there. Uh, a lot of photographers uh, don't do that, but I found if I don't do that, I have a higher probability that my images won't line up correctly. So I'll just go ahead and do that. All right, so we did our basic edits to that file. Uh, nothing really crazy. Well, let me bump up the vibrance a little bit, just just because we can. Um, so what I need to do now is apply all of these edits that we did in this file, all to the to the remaining images here. So I'm going to click Select All and Synchronize. Now it's going to bring up this uh, other menu here. Make sure all of these are checked. You don't have to really worry about these unless you did them, but you, but you shouldn't have. Um, but just make sure all of these are checked and click OK and you can see how it's going to apply that same effect to all these photos here so they should all have the same color uh, same adjustments and everything everything so uh, now we're going to just click select all to highlight all of the photos and now we're going to open them in uh, open the images and that's going to open them all in Photoshop into each individual uh, image so each individual image will have its own little tab in Photoshop alright so now we have all of our images opened up into Photoshop they are all in their own separate tab and you can see and by just scrolling them that they're all in order and so now we need to actually combine them and let Photoshop do its magic so we're gonna go to file automate and photo merge and that'll bring up this photo merge dialog box here go ahead and leave it to auto uh, that's probably the best uh, the best results I've had uh, go ahead and remove uh, or a geometric geometric distortion correction. Um, it does a little bit of a little bit of work on it, but it doesn't correct the major distractions like the major curves in the photo. But you know it it, it does a little bit, so I'll keep it on. Um, and now we're going to click Add Open Files. This is going to add every uh, image that we have open in Photoshop currently. So just make sure that all the images that you have open are the ones that you want to merge. Um, and after that we basically just let Photoshop do its thing and we'll click OK. And now it's going to be uh, combining all the files, it's going to open its uh, another, another tab and start combining all these files together. So this could take a little bit so I'm just going to let it do its thing and I'll come back when it's done. Alright and there's the final, uh, final image put together. Um, it looks, actually it looks really really well. If we zoom in here um, it's very difficult to tell where the images were st uh, stitched at so that's very cool and you can actually see if we uh, get back to the size here you can actually see if you toggle these off on and off you can see where it stitched the photo so that's pretty cool to see what Photoshop took away from each individual photo so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and crop the image down a little bit because we have these empty areas. Um, you can go in there with the uh, content aware tool and try to replace some of these and add some more in. Um, but I just I just go ahead and crop. Uh, it's just uh, it'll work out better for this situation. So I'm just going to go ahead and take make sure I have some of the sky in here. Uh, and go ahead and go in a little bit so you can s fit some of this in here. There we go. Go ahead and crop it like that. Why not? All right, there we go. 
the next thing I'm going to do is, since I have each individual layer here, I don't necessarily want that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click Command E on a Mac, and I think it's Control E on a PC. And that will, uh, that's the shortcut for just merging all the layers together. So now you have one, one large image. Uh, now from here you have two things you can do. Uh, you can make your adjustments in Photoshop, uh, you know, your regular adjustments that you would normally make to the photo, or you could go ahead and export the photo and bring it into Lightroom and make your edits there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because I prefer to make my edits in Lightroom. So I'm going to click Save As, and I'm actually going to save it as a TIFF. Uh, a TIFF file will give you more data in the actual image. It's going to be a very large image, um, but it's going to give you more data. So uh, I don't want to include the layers, so I'll just take the layers off. And I'll click Save, and that'll pop it on my desktop. Oh, I have to select the compression. Uh, no compression, I don't really want that. So I want to have as much data as possible. All right, so there is my image. I'm going to drag it into Lightroom. All right, and there we go. It is in Lightroom, and we can now do our basic edits in the Develop module. You will probably find that uh, as you make edits, uh, as, as you can see right now, uh, my Lightroom is running a bit slow because it's having to open this very large image. Um, I don't know the exact megabit size or megabyte size, uh, but it's probably very large. So you might see when you make some of these adjustments, it might take a little bit for them to actually uh, to take effect, depending on how old your computer is and how uh, specced out it is. But uh, from here, we can do our basic adjustments. I'm actually going to use a couple presets here that I uh, that I have. So I think I'm going to try this one right here, and that'll make it a kind of a black and white. And you can just kind of play around with it after uh, after this. So I'm going to bump up the exposure a little bit. And that's about all I'm going to do to it. So, you know, you can just start playing around with it and have fun with it. So uh, that's how you take a panorama and uh, combine it into Photoshop and do your uh, editing as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. Head on over to PictureMonk.com for all the other tutorials. Uh, check out what we got going on over there. It's pretty cool. And also remember to subscribe to the the uh, Picture Monk podcast. Uh, it's a weekly podcast. Um, head on over to PictureMonk.com slash podcast. That'll redirect you to iTunes and you can subscribe that way. So uh, appreciate you guys joining me and I'll see you in the next video.